Welcome to a second example of describing and graphing a transformation of tangent and cotangent. Here we have y equals 2 times cotangent of 1 fourth x. So the coefficient of x, often referenced as the variable b, is going to affect the period of the cotangent function. And then even though cotangent does not have an amplitude, this 2 out here is going to have an effect on the graph. It's going to have a vertical stretch of a factor of 2. So the period it's going to be equal to pi divided by b, but in this case b is one-fourth. So pi divided by one-fourth is the same as pi times four over one. So the period of this function is going to be four pi radians. And then again, the two, which is often referred to as the value of a, is going to stretch this graph vertically by a factor of two. Now we should be able to take the information we know about the graph of the basic cotangent function and adjust it based upon this transformation. And this is what I mean by that. Normally when we graph the cotangent function, we graph it on the interval from zero to pi radians, because that's the period of the function. And then we know it has a vertical asymptote at zero and pi radians. And then if we divide this interval into four equal parts, at pi over two, the function value is zero. At pi over four, it's equal to one. And at three pi over four, it's equal to negative one. Again, we can use this key information to graph this transformed function. What I mean by that is instead of marking off from zero to pi radians, we'll now mark off from zero to four pi radians. Divide this into four equal parts. So that would be two pi, pi, and three pi. And at zero, we'll have a vertical asymptote, as well as at four pi. And then we'll plot these three corresponding points on our transformed graph. So at this first fourth of the interval, the basic cotangent function is equal to one, but because this graph is stretched by a factor of two vertically, we'll plot that point at positive two instead of positive one. So that point would be right here. In the center of this interval, the cotangent function is zero. This function will also be equal to zero. But at the third fourth of this interval, instead of being at negative one, negative one times two, we would be at negative two here. And now we have all the information we need. Our graph is going to pass through these three points and then approach the vertical asymptotes. So it might look something like this. So as long as you know the key components of the basic cotangent function, you can use this information to graph transformations of the cotangent function.